Hello and welcome to the Ghosts and Folklore podcast. I'm Mark Royce, and on each episode, I investigate a different, weird, and wonderful subject. And on this episode, we are going to take a look at a cautionary tale warning us never to mess with female elves, the fearsome female elves, and never to mess with cows. <coughs> yes, cows. And yes, any excuse to use a rubbish sound effect. But these are not your average cows. They're a little bit more magical, shall we say. And as one greedy farmer finds out the hard way, you do not mess with these cows, just like you don't mess with those lady elves, for reasons which will be revealed very shortly. All will be revealed on this episode. Now, as regular listeners will know by now, I do love animals. I do love creepy old ghost stories and folk tales. And of course, I do love rubbish sound effects. No. And any excuse, whenever I get a chance to combine them, I will. Just recently, I spoke about the folklore surrounding cats at sea. Yes, seafaring cats. That was on episode 45. A few weeks before that, I spoke about devil goats. Yes, devil goats. <laughs> like I said, any excuse. And before that, I've spoken many a time about dogs from nice, happy fairy dogs to the more vicious, snarling, you don't want to meet them down a dark alleyway at night, devil dogs, Ugwishki. But for this episode, we are sticking with cows. Good old milk cows. And you might be thinking, how can a cow story possibly be as scary as a snarling gritty dog? But just, just bear with me. By the end of this, you will not be messing with cows and you will not be messing with the female fairy folk. So that's enough build up. That's enough warnings. Let's set the scene and get on with this wonderful old folktale. And our story takes place in, and I quote, a secluded spot in the upland country behind Abadavi in a small lake called Llyn Barvog, or the Lake of the Bearded One. What a wonderful name for a lake, for a Llyn, the Llyn of the Bearded One. And its waters are black and gloomy. No fish is ever seen to rise to the surface and the fowls of the air fly high above it all of which sounds very ominous indeed yes this might be in an idyllic part of wales but that description of the black waters and the birds flying high in the sky to keep well away from it sounds more like something from from Mordor somewhere this is more Lord of the Rings than traditional Wales isn't it but keep that picture in mind this lake was not the most welcoming of lakes shall we say at the time of this story I should add it's a wonderful wonderful beauty spot nowadays but way back through the mists of time when this tale took place it was a place that animals avoided. The fish did not want to be swimming in it. The birds did not want to be flying too close to it. But it would be incorrect to say that no living creature dwelled within. And while we won't dwell upon it in this episode, the Llyn was said to be home to a legendary Avanc creature. The Avanc, the Avanc is a terrifying creature from Welsh mythology, which deserves an entire episode to itself. So I'll save the Avanc for another time. But there was certainly said to be an Avanc in this Llyn at one point, as well as some other creatures we will dwell upon in this episode. And to quote once more, we are told that in times of old, the neighbourhood of the lake was haunted by a band of elfin ladies. Elfin ladies. Now, they are brave enough to go hang out by the lake. And I should point out, when I say elfin, I did talk about elves recently, the nasty little elves, which are a variety of the Welsh 
fairy folk. I think in this case, we are talking more generally about li little fairy type ladies rather than specifically elves. But whatever terminology we use, whatever words we use to, to describe these ladies, it's safe to say they are small, they are magical, and they are the only living creatures tough enough to haunt this lake. Well, with the exception of the Avank, which is a huge, terrifying monster in its own right. So as mentioned, do not go messing with these elfin ladies. And just to keep you extra safe, we do have a description of these ladies so you can recognize them if you come across any ladies in the area. And we are told that the elfin ladies were sometimes seen in the dusk of a summer evening, a wonderful, a wonderful image to get in your mind there by this black lake. As the sun sets, the elfin ladies emerge clad in green, accompanied by their hounds. See fairy dogs again. Rarely an episode goes by without some kind of magical dog popping up, but we are not talking about dogs on this episode in particular. And along with those fairy dogs, they also have their fairy cows, comely white milk cows, we are told, following behind. And you would have to be quite lucky to catch a glimpse of these cows. You might think a pack of cows lumbering about the countryside as the sun sets it might be quite an easy thing to spot. But no, we are told that in fact, no one is favored with more than a passing glimpse of these cows. No one is favored with more than a passing glimpse until, until the main man in our story makes an appearance. Because one day, an old farmer from the adjoining valley of Dufferin Gwyn had the good luck to catch one of the Gwartheg Llyn. And Gwartheg is Welsh for cows, that's the Welsh language for cows, and as mentioned, Llyn is lake. So these are the cows from the lake. And when I say this farmer caught one, I don't mean caught a glimpse of one. He, he caught one. He literally caught one. He captured one. And he was able to do so because this particular fairy cow had fallen head over heels in love with the cattle owned by that Welsh farmer. He must have had some wonderful, wonderful cattle there because that fairy cow was smitten. All of which, to me, doesn't really sound like capturing. Caught is, is really the correct word. It wasn't the toughest cow in the world to catch. It sounds like the cow gave itself up voluntarily. It wanted to be locked up with all these lovely cattle. It wanted to be kept in there. Maybe the farmer's act of, of capturing was merely to close the gate behind it. <laughs> look, look what I've got now. But regardless of how tough it was or wasn't to capture that cow, it was now a part of his herd. And we are told that from that day forth, his fortune was made. Never was there such a cow, we are told. Never such calves. Never such milk and butter and cheese. And the fame of the Vuchgvalion, or in English, the stray cow, spread through that central part of Wales, known as Rung the Avon, the Mesopotamia between the banks of the Mouthach and those of the Dovey. So let's let's pause and take stock of that for a second, because that that, that all escalated quite quickly, didn't it? So the farmer caught quite easily, but caught this cow. And then soon afterwards, this farmer just became a celebrity, a superstar farmer overnight. Or, or rather, I should say, the cow became a superstar, a celebrity cow overnight. And he was just flooded by so much amazing farmyard produce. He had the best, the best cheese and the best milk and the best calves for miles around. Maybe, maybe all of Wales, maybe all of Britain, all of the world. I don't know, but it was pretty 
pretty good. I mean, well, it, it was magical. It was that good. It was magical. And he was swimming in it. And they became the most famous people, or, or the, the most famous person and animal, I guess. The most famous pair for miles around, certainly in this part of Wales, known as Rung the Avon, which translates as Between the Two Rivers. And I love the way things escalate so quickly in these old tales. Overnight, like that, it's, it really is a rags-to-riches tale. But while things can escalate in a good way, in a positive way, this farmer, his wildest dreams had come true. At the same time, they can also go downhill quite rapidly. And we are told that as quickly as he became famous, he just as quickly became mad. He went mad with, be it the fame, be it the wealth, be it the products, be it the combination of all of it, maybe from messing with elfin cows. But the result was he went crazy with this power, this, this, this cow power, if, if there is such a thing as cow power, I don't know. And he became increasingly paranoid that he would lose all that he had gained. He was so used to living this good life now, he did not want to lose a single piece of it. And there was one question in particular which really did give him sleepless nights. And that was, what is going to happen when the cow just can't do it anymore? Or, more to the point, what is going to happen when that cow eventually dies? He's just going to go back to being a plain old boring farmer again. So, fearing that the elfin cow would become too old to be profitable, he thought he had better fatten her up for the market. What a plan. You're worried about your cow dying, so let's fatten her up. What a plan. But... Even after fattening up this cow, a terrible thing to be doing, but even after fattening up this cow, she still showed that she was different from earthly cattle. You could not disguise the fact that this was a magical elfin cow, regardless of how many pounds you forced upon it. For never was such a fat beast seen as this cow grew to be. So maybe maybe this is something you might want to picture in your mind, or maybe not, as the case may be. But regardless of how he, he mistreats this cow and makes it into this big bloated animal, nevertheless, it is still more graceful, more elegant, more magical than the other cows around it. Much more elegant than earthly cattle, and when the cow reached what, what sounds like a, a horrible description to me, but reached peak fatness, peak fatness, which I imagine going by how greedy this farmer is, that was way beyond any healthy level of fatness. But whatever peak fatness is, this cow reached it. And when it did so, the fateful day arrived. Killing day came. It was killing day. And the neighbors came from all about to see this celebrated cow, that this superhero cow being slaughtered. I mean, that this, this farmer really, really is a nasty piece of work. But to continue, the cow was tethered. No regard being paid to her mournful, lowing and pleading eyes. It's enough to melt anyone's heart, isn't it? This cow with its pleading eyes, this fattened cow with its pleading eyes, and yet the farmer does not give a damn. He could not care less. In fact, he wants to get this over with. He is counting up his grains from the sale. He's already got the money in his hands from the cow, which is still alive. And so the butcher raises his arm to strike. The butcher has his arm in the air and the end is coming for the elfin cow. And as a quick aside, I'm sure there's some kind of metaphor or something there, isn't there, about counting your money, or in this case, counting your grain, before your chickens have hatched, or again, in this case, 
before your fattened cow has been cruelly killed but i think the farmer might be about to learn a little lesson but let's let's not spoil it let's get back to the story and back to that scene that butcher has got his arm raised in the air ready to deliver that fateful blow and then a piercing cry awakened the echoes of the hills and made the welkin ring and what a wonderful description it's like the the land itself wales itself and the heavens above it are screaming out against this injustice which is about to take place on the land against this this blood which is due to be spilled on the green green grass of home a piercing cry awakened the echoes of the hills and made the welkin ring the butcher's arm was paralyzed and the bludgeon fell from his hand looking in the direction from which the shriek had come the astonished assemblage beheld a female figure clad in green i'm sure you can work out where this female figures come from clad in green with uplifted arms standing on one of the crags overhanging Llyn Barvog. The cavalry has arrived. As I mentioned, you do not mess with these elfin ladies. And she is there. She is far from happy. And she lets out in a thunderous cry, we are told, a voice loud as thunder. And I will quote the next part for you. She says, Come thou, Aineon's yellow one. Stray horns, the party-coloured lake cow, and the hornless doddin, arise, come home. All of which is a very fanciful way of saying, it's time to come home, cow. But just to repeat that quickly, she says, come thou, Aineon's yellow one. Stray horns, the party-coloured lake cow, and the hornless doddin, arise, come home. And so, no sooner were these words uttered than the elfin cow and all her progeny to the third and fourth generation were in full flight towards the lake. So it wasn't just the cow leaving. All of the cow's children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, it must have been quite busy while it was with the farmer, but they were all heading away from that greedy farmer and they were heading towards that elfin lady and to the lake, back to the Llyn. Now, this didn't go unnoticed by that greedy old farmer, and after recovering from his astonishment, he gave chase. He ran after all of the cows that were now leaving him. But when, breathless and panting, he gained an eminence overlooking the water, he saw the elfin dame with the cows and their calves formed in a circle around her leisurely descending mid lake once again it's it's a wonderful wonderful scene a wonderful description and something you really need to imagine i guess in your in your mind's eye as it were but these calves these cows they formed in a circle around her leisurely descending mid lake and then they disappeared beneath the dark surface beneath that black water that no fish will swim in leaving only the yellow water lily to mark the spot where they had vanished so like that 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 was me trying to click my fingers on a podcast if you caught that but with that they were gone this mass of cows this terrifying elfin lady were gone and they were left with a serene scene of just these lilies floating on the water maybe a bit like a a painting by Monet or something, say. A nice, gentle scene where there was chaos just moments before. And that farmer, who seemingly was quite happy to lose one overfed cow, had now lost many, many more. And as an epilogue to that tale, the farmer, we are told, was reduced from wealth to poverty 
but few felt pity for one who had shown himself so ungrateful as to slay his benefactor. Well, at least he failed in that. And while it might feel like the end of a pantomime, maybe, the, 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 this cruel man being reduced to ruin for being so, so heartless, well, I think we can all agree he probably got what he deserved. Buhis. And finally, before we wrap things up, I should point out that while we have spoken about a mean, nasty farmer in this episode, for the most part, in most of these fairy tales, folklore, folk tales, the Welsh farmers are very, very kind to their cows. I mean, they have to be. It makes sense. It's a, it's a mutual relationship, isn't it? The nicer you are to your cow, the nicer they'll be to you. And on the whole, white cows were seen as being that little bit special if you could find them. But more than that, deep black cows were seen as even more special. Maybe they're even more elfish. I don't know. And if you really want to trace things right back through time, the ancient druids had a certain soft spot for white oxen which i know isn't quite the same as cows but you know we're still we're still talking about cattle and we can see how these animals have been revered through the centuries through times and while i'd love to tell you much more about that right now we are nearing the end and this is of course an episode about cows i'll have to save that one for an episode dedicated just to oxen and the way i'm going through these animals i imagine we'll have an ox episode sooner rather than later and as always if you want to make sure you don't miss any of the other upcoming animal episodes please consider hitting the subscribe button and you will never miss an episode ever and if you haven't heard them already you can go back and check out the other episodes about goats and all other kinds of magical animals. And if you have any thoughts on this episode, it's always wonderful to hear from people. Maybe you've also captured a magical cow. Maybe you know a farmer who's a very nice person who does the opposite to what that evil farmer does. In which case, I'm quite easy to track down online. If you search for Mark Reese on a search engine, you can find my website. And if you do a search for Mark Reese on social media, you can find me on all of the main sites. And we can have a chat about, well, whatever you want. Just, just pop along and say hello. And on that note, it just leaves me to say thank you very much for listening. Dioch and Varian am Grando. I've been Mark Rees. This has been my Ghosts and Folklore podcast. It's the best. It's the beautiful. It's the only Ghosts and Folklore podcast beaming to you from Wales to the world. Be kind to elfin ladies. Be kind to magical cows. And if you happen to capture one... Don't try and fatten it up. No star.